Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Starship SN10 sticks the landing and then explodes. Also, certification, safety, lead EAA, FAA virtual summit topics, and Bearhawk Aircraft announces Model 5 kit delivery. Happy Friday, thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode with the latest news, so let's go ahead and start with Starship SN10 sticks the landing and then explodes. On Wednesday, March 3rd, Starship serial number 10 successfully completed SpaceX's third high altitude flight test of a Starship prototype from a SpaceX test site in Cameron County, Texas. Similar to the high altitude flight tests of Starship SN8 and SN9, SN10 was powered through ascent by three Raptor engines, each shutting down in sequence prior to the vehicle reaching Apogee approximately 10 kilometers in altitude. SN10 performed a propellant transition to the internal header tanks, which hold landing propellant before reorientating itself for re-entry and a controlled aerodynamic descent. The Starship prototype descended under active aerodynamic control, accomplished by independent movement of two forward and two aft flaps on the vehicle. All four flaps were actuated by an onboard flight computer to control Starship's altitude during flight and enable a precise landing on the intended location. SN10's Raptor engines reignited as the vehicle performed the landing flip maneuver immediately before successfully touching down on the landing pad, though it did seem to have a bit of an off vertical tilt when it came to rest and the landing legs appeared to have collapsed. As if the flight test was not exciting enough, SN10 experienced a rapid, unscheduled disassembly shortly after landing for reasons yet to be determined. After the break, Two pilots rescued by the Coast Guard and firefighters. Details after these messages. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. In Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Coast Guard to the rescue after two pilots needed help. The Coast Guard, Maui County Fire Department and Molokai Fire Department rescued two pilots from a downed DA-40 Diamond Star aircraft eight miles off Lanai on Saturday. An air station Barber's Point MH-65 Dolphin helicopter aircrew rescued the pilots and brought them to awaiting emergency services at the air station. There were no major injuries reported. At 5.49 p.m., JRCC watchstanders received a report from Honolulu Control Facility stating the aircraft was experiencing engine trouble and was likely going to ditch in the water. Gulfstream G280 meets stringent noise standards. Gulfstream Aerospace is reporting that the FAA has confirmed that the super mid-sized Gulfstream G280 meets the certifying organization's recently intensified noise standards 
known as Stage 5. The standard lowers the noise limit of subsonic aircraft. The G-280's noise emissions have reportedly always fallen below the levels now classified as Stage 5. Official approval to the Stage 5 noise standards ensures continued operational flexibility at noise-sensitive airports and those with time-of-day entry restrictions. Kalita pilots approve new contract. Kalita Air Pilot have ratified the tentative agreement which now becomes the pilots group's latest collective bargaining agreement with the company. With nearly 90% of eligible pilots participating, the majority voted to ratify the tentative agreement. The agreement provides significant improvements to retirement and enhanced working conditions. Kalita Air employed 350 pilots when ALPA became the pilots group certified bargaining representative in February 2018. NetJets wants to go supersonic. Ariane is collaborating with NetJets and Flight Safety International to shape the future of global mobility. NetJets, via the agreement with Ariane, is looking to become the exclusive business jet operator for a new global mobility platform, Ariane Connect. As part of this program, NetJets has obtained purchase price rights for 20 AS2 supersonic business jets, which may start production at Ariane Park in Melbourne, Florida in 2023. Arian's global order backlog for the AS2 is reportedly now valued at more than $10 billion. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. EAA and FAA wrapped up the three-day winter recreational aviation summit. General Aviation Safety aircraft certification, and the Mosaic Initiative were among the numerous topics discussed as top officials from EAA and the FAA wrapped up the Winter Recreational Aviation Summit, again held in a virtual format based at EAA headquarters. Even in a virtual format, this was a spectacular success as we look forward to the return of in-person meetings in the future, said Jack J. Pelton, EAA CEO and chairman of the board, in his closing remarks on Thursday. He goes on to say, We welcomed a record 38 participants to these sessions. I was impressed with discussions all week, especially the safety discussions focused on even more improvements in GA and amateur built safety. Other topics on the robust agenda included drones and airspace, aircraft certification and maintenance regulations, airport operations and more. Although the virtual format was successful given the limitations on gatherings, return to face-to-face -face meetings in Oshkosh next year is essential to build and maintain the necessary collaborative relationships with the FAA's leaders. The summit finished with an agreed-upon action list of more than 30 items, many of which will receive an update at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh in July. After these messages, Bearhawk Aircraft starts Model 5 kit deliveries. Details after the break. Introducing the new ELT-345 from Artex. This emergency locator transmitter, or ELT, boasts an industry low price, while providing the same quality and performance on which the Artex brand was built. GPS data is embedded within the first emergency transmission and provides search and rescue personnel with the aircraft location within 100 meters in less than a minute. Take to the skies knowing that you have the highest performing and reliable equipment on board. View our selection of ELTs and safety products at www.artex.com. Artex, your best last chance. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training, and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. Welcome back. Air kit for the Bearhawk Model 5, a sixth place design announced last May, have shipped. 
The first four customers of the Model 5 have received their kits and construction is underway. Old Bearhawk aircraft models employ superior strength and durability in their construction. Designed to fly fast and land slow, Bearhawk aircraft are renowned for their short field capabilities, gentle slow speed manners, and hauling capacity. Four Bearhawk Model 5 kits have arrived in the hands of their respective builders. Virgil Irwin took delivery of one in Oklahoma. The aircraft is ultimately destined for West Africa. The kit has been fantastic so far, said Virgil. He plans to have it flying by October and meanwhile will be finishing up his A&P certificate. The Bearhawk is Virgil's first complete build, adding, I will have a couple of guys helping off and on. The instrument panel will be IFR capable and built around the Garmin G3X. Once in Africa, the aircraft will be based on a dirt runway. Virgil states there is no actual IFR in the country. However, Niger weather in the Sahara Desert requires special VFR due to dirt in the air. Well, that does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with story ideas or just to say hi. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.